I found the loophole in the dress code here. Since I'm talking about painting my car plaid, I wore plaid. <laughs> All right, let's get going. When I was about 10 years old, I saw a car similar to this one in a magazine, and this very powerful thought was planted in my young mind. That thought was, you are allowed to have a weird car. <laughs> Between this picture and two friends in high school that had unique cars, that was the critical mass of weirdness that I needed to do my first project when I was 20 years old. I painted this car. Uh, it's called the Star Car. Not very creative <laughs> name, but uh, it was a pretty inexpensive project. But as you can see on the middle there, it started wearing off. So I started asking my friends for some new ideas. My friend Carrie mentioned tessellations would be perfect for a car project. Now, if your seventh grade math is a little rusty, don't worry. A tessellation is a shape or a series of shapes that can be repeated infinitely over a plane or a car. <laughs> but even through these first two projects, the dream was always plaid. I just thought it sounded too hard. There's all these layers. Ugh, it just looked hard. <laughs> uh, and besides that, I didn't have a plaid in mind. But when this shirt came into my world, I thought, that is a plaid worthy of painting on a car. Uh, also, at around the same time, I bought a Honda Element from my best friend, telling her, if you sell me that car, I will paint it plaid. <laughs> so everything was in place, everything was ready. Um, now I'll just let you know these next, well, the, ne the rest of the slides basically are going to show you the process of me painting my car uh, from start to finish. I'm not going to narrate each one because... I think that would be a little boring, uh, maybe about as boring as watching paint dry, but hopefully you guys do okay. Um, basically the process is a lot of masking in a certain configuration, then spraying, and then taking the masking tape off and repeat many times until all the layers are present. Um, now my story kind of starts here because, well, just before I started, I guess, it was where the story starts. Um, you would think that wanting to paint a car plaid for 10 years and having the car in mind and having the plaid in mind would be enough. But I needed three more swift kicks in the pants before I started. Now, the first swift kick is this humongous empty warehouse. I don't usually have an empty warehouse to work in. And so having the space available, uh, I knew it was time to get going. Uh, the second swift kick to the pants was running into a professional auto painter named Brett McGinley. He is very good at what he does. He wins national awards. And he was humble and patient enough to sit down with me and answer all my questions. Now keep in mind, he's not telling me how he paints the cars. He was telling me how I could paint the cars with my limited budget. Um, he told me where, what store to go to, what grid of sandpaper to use, exactly how to sand it, exactly how long things needed to dry. So it, it put forth before me this path that I could actually start seeing um, instead of just the scary many layered uh, plaid. And then the third thing that happened that I feel like just put me on the path of actually doing the thing was I read an article that said, when you see somebody smile, you actually smile. And even if your face is being stubborn, your body still creates all those good chemicals. So you get all the benefits of smiling just when you see somebody smile. So I thought, if I could make this car silly enough so that I see people smile every day, that is actually making my life better. And that has proven to be true. I'm not too worried about miles per gallon, but I do worry about smiles per gallon. <laughs> <laughs> now, the process that you've been watching took a month of time, and it took about 100 hours of work. Um, I got a little persnickety, especially on steps like this. Um, but despite my persnickety-ness, I did learn that perfection was not demanded of me during this process, which was the biggest take-home lesson that I learned. Uh, I think Voltaire says it best. He says, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Basically, don't not do a, a project just because you're not going to pull it off perfectly. And I didn't pull this off perfectly. I made some huge mistakes that I needed to rework. Uh, the hood of the car was a major uh, moment of frustration. You'll see how it turned out in a few slides. But uh, it's something I'm still working on. But if you, if you step back from big risks because it's not going to be perfect, 
you're going to miss out on a lot of things. I wouldn't be up here tonight because I'm a little terrified. So hopefully you guys will uh, give me some grace with my non-perfect presentation here. Um, so the idea behind this, the, the idea that endured, obviously the warehouse is full of somebody's stuff now and and Brett is still a professional painter, but the thing that endures through this three years later now is the smiles. Every single day I see somebody smiling, and I don't know if it's always at my car, but there are always, always smiles to be seen. Um, we're, ne we're nearing the end of the project here, and I'm getting pretty excited to see the, the end pro product. It's been in a dark a dark warehouse, or a dark-ish warehouse for a month, and I didn't really know if I had quite pulled it off. There was the sort of mistake. <laughs> I had to redo the, the center part there on the hood. It turned out okay, though. Um, I guess the, the take-home thing is if you have something that's popping into your mind that you've wanted to do since you were 10 or 20, uh, think about doing it. Take that first step. It's not... <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, Yeah, take that first step and do something scary. If that first step feels okay, then do the next step. It's kind of all about taking that next correct step. So here's my friend Christina in the original plaid shirt, posing and having fun, and that's the whole point. So uh, go forth and be weird, enjoy your PK, and I'll be out front uh, during intermission and after the show by my car if you guys have any questions for me. 